Welcome to our fourth Sunday of Easter, continuing our celebration of uh, the last through till Pentecost. Our readings for this week include Acts chapter 20, verses 17 through 35, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, and John 10, verses 22 through 30 are our sermon texts for this morning. And in that, in that text, John, uh, Jesus refers to himself as the Good Shepherd. So our hymns include, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. The King of love, my shepherd is, and I am Jesus, little lamb. And, um, and uh, you all may, our intro it for this morning is uh, Psalm 23, uh, the Good Shepherd. So... Um, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I was visiting the Karstensons this week, and um, they, uh, did you know that they used to have sheep on their farm? Not, not too long ago, even, actually. Uh, the sheep would eat the weeds in the fields that they would leave fallow for the summer, and uh, and then they would have to move them when, when it was time to plant in the one field and, and, and then uh, harvest in the next. But, um, but they assured me that their sheep did not know their voice and would not follow them. They would run away from them they'd, and they'd have to herd them and, and to move them from one field to the next. They were wild sheep. <laughs> Do you know why the sheep were wild and why they would run away from the Karstensons and they didn't know their voice and they wouldn't follow their voices because the Karstensons were wheat farmers. <laughs> they, they were not sheep ranchers. They weren't shepherds. They didn't live in the fields taking care of and watching over the sheep. The sheep didn't get to know them and trust them. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the sheep were really, uh, for them, just a, at the time, an easy way to control the weeds. Since, you know, in more recent years, they've developed uh, other, easier ways, better ways. <laughs> so you don't have to be taking care of and chasing those sheep all over and mending the fences and all the other things that they used to have to do for that. So, the Karstensons didn't really understand or hadn't experienced what Jesus was saying in, in this 10th chapter of John, when he said that his sheep would know his voice and would follow him. And I bet that most of you have, uh, have only heard of that too. You haven't actually seen it or experienced it for yourself. But, uh, you know, but has anyone actually seen a flock that would follow their shepherd by his voice? Um, or have you only heard about it <laughs> in sermons and Bible stories? Well, but I guess there's also a good lesson in this, too. We are all sinful people. We are like the wild sheep, often running away from our Lord and Savior, trying to do things our own way, or trying to hide our sins from Him. Isaiah said it, said it and, uh, and then Handel put it to music. We, like sheep, have gone astray, each to his own way. So I needed to think up a slightly different way to think about what Je Jesus' words that we might understand better. And so I was, I was thinking about this. I'm, I'm usually home uh, before Tanya is, waiting for her to, to, to get off work, to come home. And sometimes I've, I've started preparing the cooking but depending on what we're making, sometimes I haven't yet, but I'm waiting for her so, so I can make it hot and fresh uh, when she arrives. And um, so it's not you know, warmed up and cold and <laughs> old uh, by the time she gets home. Sometimes it's hard to tell when she's going to get home. She doesn't always, she usually tries to let me know a little bit, but not always. But, but I can always tell, I can always hear her little pickup truck. I hear the other cars going up and down the road. I don't know exactly whose they are, but, but her pickup truck, I know, 
It's hers. Even before she pulls into the driveway, I can hear it a block down the road. I know that she's coming home and that I can start, start cooking dinner or uh, finishing it up if, I've, if it's been cooking for a little while, but uh, put on the finishing touches and get it ready for her to, to walk in the door. We can welcome her with a kiss and a hug if it's a good day. And uh, <laughs> so I, I was thinking, you probably have your loved ones too. You have ways that you knew they were coming home, whether it was, whether it was the sound of the vehicle or, or maybe even their footsteps, uh, the way that they would walk to the house it was different than everybody else, wasn't it? Uh, the way that they would open the door. Um, and, and maybe they didn't, they wasn't like that old TV show, Honey, I'm home. Uh, maybe for, in your household it was more like, uh, What's for dinner? Or, Is dinner ready yet? We're ruled by our stomachs, aren't we? But, uh, but you knew that voice, you knew the sound, uh, and <laughs> usually we are happy when they come home, aren't we? And even before our phones had caller IDs to you know, tell us who's, who's calling, uh, you knew your, your voices of your kids and your best friends and, and your brothers and sisters and your parents, you knew their voice, and you were usually happy to hear them, weren't you? Even, but then again, looking back now, even in those times when you, when you weren't looking forward, you knew that mom and dad's voice, especially mom and dad's, when, they, when you had done something wrong, and, and, uh, but now you look back on those times, even those times, with fond memories, because it's still your mom and dad, it's still the people you love, it's still part of who they are. So I bet you're wondering, how are we going to know the voice of Jesus so that we can follow him when he, when he's, he, since he's up in heaven now, and we don't get to hear him talking to us, not, not in the same way uh, that we hear other people talking to us. Uh, we don't want to be like Saul. Remember last week we, we read about Saul on the road to Damascus and the voice came from, from heaven and he said, who are you, Lord? We don't want to be like that. We want to know Jesus' voice. We want to be able to be ready to follow him when he calls us into his paradise that he has prepared for us, don't we? But he is here with us. When we listen to God's word, especially in worship, when it's being read and when it's being preached, and when you're at home in your devotions, you're reading God's Word, it is Jesus' words. It is Jesus talking to you. Uh, so, you are, so you are getting to know His voice. And when He does appear again in the, in the heavens and the clouds and everybody sees Him and knows Him and He calls you to follow Him to heaven, even if you're in your grave and you come out out of your graves, you will know that voice in a very special and wonderful way, the Holy Spirit will help you to know it, just as you know your loved one's voices. And you will be ready to follow Him when He calls. That's why it's very important to be here, gathered together as His people in church, listening to His words, and reading the Bible on your own daily as much as possible, so that you get to hear Jesus' voice. Without those things, it, you can forget what it sounds like. You can be unprepared when He calls. And while the Holy Spirit can be working in a person to know a voice even years later without hearing it, I think you also know of examples in your own lives where the voice of a loved one has been forgotten and you have to be reminded who it is. Even a best friend, if you haven't heard it for a long time. So it's better to hear it regularly, to come to church, hear Jesus' words, hear Him speaking to you in those daily devotions, loving words that make you feel safe and happy and joyful. Just like when you, your loved one comes home to you, 
whatever sounds it is that remind you that they, that they are home and that you feel safe and happy. Uh, just as, just as, as uh, Mary at the empty tomb, you remember you know, she was weeping and she was crying. She didn't know where they had taken the body. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And then she, she knew it was him. Rabbi, teacher, my loved one. And she wrapped his arm, her arms around him and held on tight to him. Honey, I'm home. When he comes back, we'll all get to wrap our arms around him and hold him tight. Then it will be time to be home together. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.